In this video, I'm going to be working radicals, but not only radicals with just numbers in them, but radicals with variables in them as well. And we're going to be starting with the basics of this. So we're going to see very simple examples of this. So let's go ahead and just jump to those examples. Now you see that I have four of them here. I'm going to explain how to do these using example one. And in my explanation, I'm going to write out every single detail along the way. But hopefully, in me explaining all those details, that helps you visualize this and helps you skip a lot of the work that I'm going to be doing here. So eventually in these problems, you really should jump to almost beginning to end with minimal or no work in between. So let us focus on example one. Notice I have the fourth root of it, so that means I'm going to be taking groups of four out, or I'm going to be focusing on powers of four. Here I have y to the eighth, so let me write out what that means. y to the eighth means I have y times itself eight different times. So now since I'm taking the fourth power of it, I want to look at y's in powers of four. So if I put four of these y's together, I have one there. And if I put another set of four y's together, I have another there. So this gives me fourth root of y to the fourth, that's from my first grouping, and times y to the fourth, that's of my second grouping here. So I have this fourth root of y to the fourth twice. So I basically can cancel this out each time individually. So that gives me a single y here times a single y there. And we know that y times y simplifies to be y squared. So my overall answer to this problem is y squared. Now, this is me working out every single step in this problem, but again, like I said, we want to try and skip all these steps before. Basically, we want to figure out how many groupings of each of these that we have. Notice we had two groupings of y to the fourth, so that means we are left with y squared. Or, the easiest way to do this is to take your inside power of 8 and divide it by your outside root of 4. So, this gives me y to the 8th divided by 4, which simplifies to be y squared. A much simpler process than writing out every single detail that we see here. But I just wanted to show you how this works out in case you don't understand why we can simplify it this way over here. Now, in the rest of the examples that we see, I will not be doing this step. I will be doing the much shorter process that we see over here. And in fact, I won't even write out the division step. I'll be doing that in my head. So at this time, I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can work the rest of these on your own. So let's move over to example two. Again, I don't want to write out all the details because you'd probably get tired of writing out 24 of these Z's. Remember, the easiest way is to take your inside power and divide it by your outside root. And that will tell you your final power in the end. So 24 divided by 6 gives you 4. So that tells you your final answer to this is Z to the fourth. That means if I would have wrote out 24 of these Z's and divided them into groups of six, I would have four groups of them in the end. Now, example three and four not only have variables in it, but they also have numbers or coefficients in it as well. And it's no big deal. Just take them piece by piece. So in example three, the square root of 25 gives you five, because five times five, two times, gives you 25. And the square root of x squared, well, my square root and my square cancels out, and that just leaves me with x. So my final answer here is 5x. In example four, you might instantly think no answer because I have a negative involved. But that's not true because this is an odd power. I can take an odd power of a negative number. So again, let's just look at it piece by piece. What is the cube root of 64? 
what is the cube root of negative 64? So I need something times itself three times to give me negative 64. And the answer to that is negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 two times gives me positive 16. And positive 16 times a third negative 4 gives me negative 64. And then this guy here, again, you just take your inside power and divide it by your outside root. 6 divided by 3 gives me 2. So my overall answer is negative 4x squared in this example here. So all of our roots won't come out evenly like they did in these examples here. Well, to help us to figure out how to simplify the roots that don't come out evenly, we're going to need to look at some radical properties. And here they are. There's actually only three of them. And to be honest with you, you've used all of them in an example that we've seen so far. You just didn't even realize that you were using an official property. So let's walk through each of these step by step, and then when we need to use these in examples of roots that don't come out evenly, I'll show you how they're useful in that instance. So starting with property number one, the nth root of a to the nth power. We've already seen this, and this works out to be just a on the inside. Now all of your homework problems will have something similar to this statement here. Assume that no radicands, which is just plural for radical, were formed by raising negative quantities to even powers. And that is to help cover the situations of when you have an even root of a negative number, which we saw earlier will not come out to be a real answer. But we still want to be able to take care of situations like this, such as the fourth root of y to the fourth power. Now I'm taking a even root, and I don't know exactly what my y variable is. Is it a positive number? Is it a negative number? Is it something else? Well, we still want to be able to simplify this example here, even though we don't know whether y is positive or negative. So what we can do is we know that the fourth power and the fourth root cancel out. But if we don't know that it's positive or negative, we can put absolute value bars over it to inform us and everybody else that this answer is, in fact, positive to begin with. Or we can put in this statement saying that y in itself will always be a positive number. And if that's the case, then we don't have to worry about the absolute value. So since this statement will be in every one of your homework problems, you know that the power and the root cancel out, and that just leaves you with the base on the inside. But I wanted to warn you, if your homework didn't have this statement here, then the official way to answer these problems is to put absolute value around your variables when you have an even root involved. Okay, so let's move on to radical property number two. If we have the nth root of something times the nth root of something else, then we can actually combine these and put it into the same root, the nth root of a times b in this example. Now this only works if your roots are the same. If I had a fifth root and a fourth root, I would not be able to combine these. And actually, like I said earlier, you've used this property before, but you've just used it in a backwards way. You started it with one root, and you mentally thought about it as two separate roots. And I'll show you what I mean by this in some other examples. Same thing with property three, the nth root of a divided by the nth root of b. You can combine these together as the nth root of a over b. Again, only if your roots match, only if they're both the nth root. And again, you've actually used this property just in backwards order. You've taken one big square root over a fraction, and you've mentally thought about it as two separate roots. And again, I'll pull this property up when we actually use it in a specific example in the next video. Now, I do want to point out, looking at property 2 and property 3, we can combine roots when they are multiplied, and when they are divided. 
You will not be able to do this in other operations. For example, the nth root of A plus the nth root of B is not equivalent to the nth root of A plus B. You cannot combine these in this sort of way when it is addition or subtraction, only when it's multiplication or division. Now that we've seen our official properties, now we can use these to simplify radicals that do not come out evenly. And that's what my next video will be over.